Hello everyone, this is Mavish Jaz and with me today is Harun Rashid. Hi Harun. Hi Mavish, thank you so much for having me. How are you? How are you? How's it going out there in London? Um, I'm, I'm well, I'm good. The weather is nice and sunny outside, which makes a change for normal, yes. miserable weather in London. Um, oh. So I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. It's very bright here, very sunny in Dubai. <laughs> so we're bringing to you this very international and, you know, poles apart in terms of weather conversation, but we're not poles apart when it comes to a lot of thoughts and ideas that we have. Harun and I uh, go back quite a long way when it comes to Twitter, but we've met sporadically over the past couple of months and we chat quite a bit. And I love what Harun does in terms of covering South Asian um, entertainment industry. And I think there's such a dearth of good reporters like you, Harun, who believe in sort of doing their job. And then we'll, that's what I wanted to sort of pick up the conversation today with. We have a lot of catching up to do. And we want well, to firstly, about- firstly, that's why I agreed to do this interview, because you shower <laughs> me with compliments. So thank you. <laughs> and now it's your turn. Now you, but, now uh, you yeah, go. Exactly. I must repay the compliment. The reason you and I are friends is because I think you're amazing. I think the work you do is amazing. I think what you do for uh, particularly Pakistani entertainment on a global platform is amazing. Um, And I think maybe you're an influencer and part of the reason that I became more intrigued about the industry is because you put it in a very good light on social media. I think that that's something that I, yeah, I definitely want to talk about that. Why doesn't that happen more? Why don't we talk about it? And that's why I wanted to also talk to you uh, about Pakistani TV shows is because there is a lot of this great content and nobody really seems to be talking about it. For what reason? I don't know. Uh, could be bad marketing, could be bad decision making, competition, you know, sort of uh, inter-house politics. So we'll talk about that. But one of the biggest things that I wanted, Harun and I always end up talking about is our profession and sort of our place in the new world order when it comes to stars and their you know, interviews and then their social media. So Harun, I want to begin with the, the big question, the fun question rather, which is uh, controversies. And controversies seem to be quite a lot in, uh, obviously they're always there in India and it's, it's more political these days in India, right? Yeah, for sure. I think in India, controversies have gone from who's sleeping with who to mm. which political party you support at the moment. Exactly. And that's the and did you speak thing. out on this or not? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it's because India, Bollywood is a big international brand. And because the bigger and the more international these issues get, the bigger the spotlight. So, uh, I mean, I don't know, fortunately, unfortunately, nobody really cares what Pakistani celebrities are saying. But uh, it is a storm in a teacup, though. We care about what they're saying. Do you, do you, I mean, you said you don't think people care about Pakistani celebrities. Do you really think that? Because I think that particularly Pakistani diaspora communities in the UK or the US or Dubai even, mm. they follow Pakistani celebrities as much as they, they follow do. They do, but the international media doesn't. For example, if uh, Mahira Khan, let's say, who has not done a fairness cream ad, but if she had done a fairness cream ad, would you think she would have had the same uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, backlash uh, as compared to what Priyanka Chopra did, who actually did do fairness creams ad? So this is what I'm saying. Like there, there is, there is power obviously in these celebrities, but not in that same level. Not in that same level, but then, you know, bear in mind, Bollywood what, is 100 years old. Yeah, exactly. No, no, not discounting uh, that at all. Yeah. yeah. I, but, you know, I think with, with Pakistan also, the difference is in, um, in Bollywood, you mm-hmm. have, um, I mean, we're going to talk about image consultancy in a moment, but in Bollywood, you have um, so much PR and so much red tape in place to yeah. stop controversies from getting out of hand. Whereas in Pakistan... Yes, there is they still do. A, what is up with that? <laughs> Say that again, sorry. I'm saying that they still do. What is up with that? Who's not doing their job right? (laughs) But in in Pakistan, it's literally just the celebrities and the fans. And it's just an open playing field, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but so let's start with this first of all. And then definitely we're going to talk about why and how uh, do stars even need uh, in Pakistan? Because are they even big enough? Because, you know, there's a lot of financial cost involved in hiring PR and then giving money to the image consultancy and the image and the industry itself is in a very cottage, uh, you know, sort of phase. It's not really yeah. that big. So that's what I meant when I said that would, I mean, sure, Mahira is big and Mevish, are, Mevish is big and Sava Kamar is big. But again, they are, we only make news when, let's say when Zara Abid unfortunately passed away and then she got those horrible comments on her Instagram and we only make news then. So it's not like, oh, this TV show is amazingly popular because everyone's raving about it. And that's one of the reasons why I talk about 
uh, Pakistani industry so much is because I feel like there's so much potential and content here, but nobody's really talking about it. And for good reason, because we're not really tooting our own horn. Anyway, coming to the controversy, how do you think uh, is the controversy, like there was Saira and Sheroz, then there was Sabah Kamar who said she doesn't identify as a feminist, but she believes in gender equality. Then, you know, now Ushna Shah, I think, has made a lot of uh, strange comments on her social media. And then, uh, uh, and then there are all these celebrities who come on so their social media and say a lot of things, which like maybe they shouldn't have, maybe they should consult a PR or something before tweeting and posting. You know, I think uh, my personal opinion is that Pakistani controversies are blown way out of proportion. Mm -hmm. I think it's partly they because, I, I, I partly think that it's because the celebrities don't project what they want to say in the right way. And I think it's partly just that, for some reason, Pakistani fans are ready to latch on to anything a celebrity does. Like, for example, um, you mentioned Cheryl's and Syrah and Sadaf, and that whole controversy, like, firstly, it's nobody's business. Exactly. It, that's the first thing. Like, it is none of your business. Exactly. They have put out a picture of their nikah day. Congratulate them and move on with your yeah. life. You are not part of the Sabzwari family. You yeah. do not have to deal with whatever domestic um, issues they're dealing with. Also, you have no idea of what the timeline actually is of when Syra and Cheryl's broke up, when Sadaf and, and Cheryl's got together. Like, surely you have bigger and better things to worry about in your own life than, you know... Any of that. I find it bizarre, you know, and I also think it's extremely disrespectful to, to everybody involved in that situation. Mm. It's disrespectful to Syra, who's moved on with her life. It's yeah. very disrespectful to Sadaf, who I, I personally think has been... Her. More for her than anybody else, I think. Absolutely, but I think it's just completely out of order. I mean, how would you like it? And I know this is a really basic idea, but how would you like it if that was your sister or your daughter or your mother or somebody in your family who was spoken about with such vile, disrespectful language as yeah. people have been speaking about Sadaf with? I, I just think it's, where, where's your basic level of humanity in that situation? It's just gone. And I, I want to ask you this because I feel like, uh, you know, the, the paparazzi culture or uh, the, the talking about the celebrities culture the gossip culture is there in india it's there in the uk it's there in the us i want to ask you if it's different from the uk the way that we do this like is it uh, i mean obviously you have your daily mails and your mirrors and all of that and they do and they do tabloid stuff uh, yeah. but uh, do you think that this is sort of similar to what happens here or is it worse in pakistan for some reason whatever reason well, I think the difference is the moral policing, right? In the UK, of course, you have tabloid papers and you talk yeah. about you talk about all these things in, in like you mentioned, Daily Mail, or The yeah. Sun, all of these papers, they will talk about um, celebrity gossip. But the moral policing in Pakistan is hugely problematic because at, this, at one point you say, you know, respect women. At one point you're saying treat others like you wish to be treated yourself. And at other points, you think it's completely right for you to make judgments about someone's life based on them being a public figure. And, you know, I, 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 um, I remember doing an interview with a, a Bollywood celebrity, and I can't remember who it was at this point. But uh, to be honest, I think it might have been Priyanka Chopra. But I remember her <laughs> saying, we are, we are public figures. We are not public property. You yeah. know, yes, our lives are of interest, but you don't own my... I think we should you talk about Priyanka, me. though. Sorry? We should talk about Priyanka at some point in, in this conversation. We, I think she's we like, should. yeah. We should, but, that, but that's my view on it. I just think that, you know, Pakistan is very extreme with its reactions to yeah. celebrity gossip. And I think and it is dangerous. Celebrity gossips. I think like we are very, like this is something that I've been feeling for a very long time that I think that we are very quick uh, because we have some sort of, I don't know, identity crisis or is it just general self-hate? Uh, is it just because we don't have streamlined, like, you know, like you've mentioned, Sun and Mirror and all of these places, they are, they are tabloid magazines. Right now, it's so difficult sometimes when I'm reading these papers and I'm like, is this a tabloid magazine or is this a mainstream entertainment lifestyle platform? What is this? And, you know, it's so hard to differentiate sometimes from one platform to Jezebel or one platform to Daily Mail, and then one platform to uh, Variety or Culture, uh, sorry, Variety or Vulture or uh, The New Yorker. So I yeah. have all of these, I'm looking at all of these plans, I'm like, oh, well, this has a think piece. And then it also has a same, uh, like, article on, uh, you know, shaming Priyanka Chopra for something or shaming Mahira Khan for something. 
like i really want to uh, i really i mean i feel like i don't know if uh, i i can understand what really is going on um, I, i think that this is a good point to talk about maybe priyanka and we'll come back to pakistan about after this that do you think that the hate she gets is excessive because i think that it it does get excessive now yeah i i totally think it's excessive i think um, i think the priyanka chopra um incident has been blown way out of proportion yeah. um you know she tweeted something in february last year which i think the majority of people think was unreasonable you know i think the majority of people think she shouldn't have tweeted it and yeah. i think that's fair you yeah. know and i don't really i i actually don't want, really want to give my opinion on it i mean i'm a, i'm a news journalist i i would like to keep a ra- rather balanced neutral view on that yeah. but she tweeted something that ruffled a lot of feathers yeah. um but does that mean she hates pakistanis i don't think it does i've i've met and interviewed priyanka chopra multiple times i know that she has friends who are pakistani and i know that that sometimes is a a lame excuse that you know your friends are pakistanis but has have i ever felt like priyanka chopra has an issue with somebody based on the country they're from no i haven't and i think that people jumped on this um and have you know like and also really sort of just took her down another <laughs> I mean I think she could have dealt with that better in yeah. my opinion I think beauty comp was something that maybe she could have dealt with better um but is that a reason to literally scrutinize her entire life I'm not sure you know I was um you 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 use TikTok right yes so I realized TikTok is good for two things it's either good for uh, like young kids who want to become famous overnight or it's a hating ground for Priyanka Chopra like literally every other video is somebody hating on Priyanka Chopra and i personally think it's gone beyond um it's gone beyond the, the the realm of reason absolutely i think that the, like you you mentioned very important points that that tweet it was a very highly charged political atmosphere maybe tweeting that wasn't really responsible for somebody in her uh, you know in her sort of personality or her background or her portfolio and then there's similarly the and i and i when a beauty con thing also objectively i feel like when you are a public figure and you get heckled like that uh, yeah you should handle it better but not everybody will have all your radars on top and then you know saying the right thing at the right time people do get well, so you know people um people um uh challenge or people objected against the language she used at beauty con but if you look at priyanka chopra's public persona since uh, 2000 when she became miss world that is the language that priyanka chopra would have used even if it was an indian fan who was who was challenging her on a public platform that that kind of feisty attitude is what priyanka has built a brand on so yeah. i i don't think that she was doing it because there was a pakistani yeah. um who was challenging her i think she would have responded in the same way regardless however i also think if if tomorrow i had an interview with priyanka chopra i know that she would be happy to answer a question about it i i don't think she's somebody who would shy away from yeah, addressing yeah. an issue if she feels that she's made somebody uncomfortable yeah no i know because i think after that incident she did speak out and i i don't know where it was but i read an interview of hers where she said that uh, you know obviously she's not pro war and she doesn't uh, you know she has pakistani friends and all of that and she loves the content and all of that she said something like that I've, i've forgotten where it was my thing is with priyanka where i stand is that i definitely feel that obviously all of us it's not just her all of us all so many south asian celebrities whether it's india whether it's pakistan i'm not well versed in nepal and bangladesh but i'm sure they have their share too all of us have done all of them have done something weird or something stupid something they're not really proud of and it has sort of just blown out of proportion because now it's twitter and social media and priyanka has for some reason uh, become the face of that she's become the face of all those stupid things that we've done in the past and i don't think that's fair because this she's the massively talented actress and when it comes to bigotry there are bigger bigots out there who you can call out and i think that's wrong to make her the sort of the butt of all the things that are wrong with uh, with with what the world is happening sure we make stupid choices we make different choices but yeah it's, it's just gotten too much now absolutely also i think you can make an informed opinion about someone by looking like knowledge is power right so look at her work for example okay you, you you're upset about one tweet or you're upset about one incident um and and i'm not i'm not um endorsing what she did i'm yeah. not saying yeah, same did, here right? absolutely not yeah see then again I see that is again is the difference just because we look at looking at something in a different perspective does not mean that we endorse that one incident you know we're yeah. saying that that incident and what she said was not okay 
but then there is also so much more to unpack here which people don't want to do like look at her public persona she's friends with malala she's friends with riz ahmed she's friends with hasan minaj she's friends with muslim uh, personalities who are in the public eye she yeah. was uh, you know uh, i mean i look at her last film the sky is pink as well if you watch that film in it's particularly the first half there is actually an emphasis on how um, indians and pakistanis work together to campaign her. to save this this girl's life you know so she wouldn't put her name to projects that promote cross border harmony if she was such a hater in the first yeah, place she's not i know she's not it's just that i think it's one of those things which now brings me to this thing that i want to discuss uh, which we were it's kind of connected to the first point as well that when stars put out like sheroz put out this massive statement that oh no this has happened and i i i am swearing by god and i'm swearing by this and i'm swearing by that i mean do they really i mean pakistani stars them i know india has and i'm sure you know uh, more than i do how how that machinery and how that whole system works do you think pakistan needs a similar kind of system because otherwise people will just keep on like throwing these poor guys for just getting married or divorced So I think the first thing we spoke about when we spoke about that incident was how fans overreact. But I think celebrities also have a responsibility in how they uh, put out information to yeah. to their fans as well. And that is all part of as we've mentioned image bulk, image building, image consultancy. You know, in Bollywood there are layers and layers and layers before a star puts out a statement to their fans. You know, put for example, if a star feels like they need to clarify a bit of news they'll first speak to their manager who will speak to their publicist who will write an informed statement that is factually correct and that cannot be uh, and that is robust so, so that people yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. that will then go to a so a digital team who will who will work out when's the best time to put this up is there something going on in the political or social scenario that this could have an impact on there's a lot of thought and strategy that goes into communicating with the fans whereas in pakistan it's literally one tweet or one instagram video yes. and it's out there yeah. um and i do think you know pakistani celebrities sometimes forget that they are in a position of power and they have a large active audience who listens to their every word yeah. so maybe they also need to be a bit more select with what they actually put out there mm. but i think that this is the problem which i i personally interacted with some of these people and when i tell them you know why don't you like why don't you hire pr I, just obviously i won't name how many people i've said this to but i've uh, <laughs> i've actually told this and like you know you've got all this massive fan following you're growing as a star or you already a big star please get a team please find somebody to take care of these things for you because even mentally and emotionally this is not good you know why are you reading every troll comment that is coming on you it's like this i mean sometimes i want like i wish somebody would handle my twitter for the day and i'm nobody and look at these people with millions and millions of followers and they've got like uh, uh, they're just out there trolling through their insta i'm like and i asked remember i remember asking one or two people I'm like oh so you do you have a team for this right I'm like no we read every comment that comes I'm like what why why would you do that to yourself so and i feel like and this is what i want your uh, input on is that the industry is not that big enough these guys if let's say uh, i'm to charge somebody x amount of money uh, for my services to handle your social media look at what you're saying or like you said having a digital team or having a pr team if these four five people are to be hired and then paid some of these stars don't get paid enough and that's the problem you've got a big audience but you're not making enough money so how, how, what do you think they should do then So this was my frustration when I first started covering Pakistani entertainment about four four or five years back um and and at that point it was from the UK so I was looking at it from a different perspective um I was looking in and I was thinking wow Pakistan is so um I honestly I was thinking wow Pakistan has a great star system they have a great infrastructure because the only stars I was interacting with at that time did have teams so I was interacting with Mahira who has Seher her manager I was interacting with Fawad who has Hasan his manager I was interacting with people who had some level of um infrastructure in place and yeah. then i came to pakistan and i realized that, that that's not that's an exception to the rule that's not the wide um widespread mentality it is nice to see that there is now pr firms like you know we know samra who ha- who has a pr firm yeah. you know farooqa has a pr firm yeah. yeah. maida yeah. there are there, there are there are pr and management firms that are doing well is yeah. it enough no it's not enough 
Um, is and, and I think the main problem is because the stars don't see the value in it properly. Exactly, exactly. That's the problem. That's the biggest problem. Yeah, but you know, you raise a really good point about can they afford to yeah. hire all those people? Yeah, like I know they want to. Some of them want to. Some of them want to be told what to say, what not to say. Some of them want to be guided. Okay, what would be the best way of saying this? And oh, you really think? Oh, do you think that was happening? Because you know, these guys, when you if you talk to them uh, on a daily basis, you will know that oh, they're somebody's running off to a shoot. They don't really like you and I, or even me, for example. For sure, I'm like scrolling through Twitter. It's my, I mean, I, it's kind of like I feel like it's my job to know what's going on because they yeah. are based on what the work I do. But if I'm a celebrity who is uh, doing a scene from. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then after 4 p.m. I have a mall visit and then after 9 p.m. I have a, a party to go to or an award show to go to. I don't have time to sit through Twitter or I don't have the time to read through BBC News and what the, like you said, the narrative that is being shaped around where my information will suddenly come and like, like oh, I'm endorsing a fairness stream in the middle of a whole freaking revolution about Black Lives Matter. Are you serious yeah. right now? You know, that kind of thing. So they don't really have the money. I don't think they're paid well enough to hire um you know capable intelligent people they'll hire people but not not everybody can and you know some of these uh, stars can't even afford these uh, small pr agency or even big or medium pr agencies but where's where's the where's the um where's the missing piece of the jigsaw there because what i don't understand is yeah. the entertainment industry in any country is one of the most lucrative industries in, 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 in any country, right? It actually adds a lot to the economy of a country as well. But you're saying that, so are the channels not paying the stars well enough or where, where's the problem here? I think the problem is, and I think that this was a, a question that was raised by one of the, I, again, I forgot, I've forgotten who I was talking to, but it was one of these industry insiders and uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, producers and showrunners who are saying this to me, and I think some of them have gone on record to say that the problem is that it's not treated like an industry. So for example, where in the rest of the world, or even the, in Bollywood, I'm sure, that if you go to a bank and say, I want to make a film, you might be able to get a loan. Like it's not really treated as an industry. It's moving towards that. They are creating, PTI government has been saying that they are creating some sort of uh, film fraternity sort of benefits and uh, giving them loans and allowing uh, you know, banks and systems in place, which uh, recognizes the entertainment industry as an industry. But previously, it was not like that. And uh, as far as TV channels are concerned, I think there's a hegemony, there's a set rate. And I don't think that these even these TV channels make as much as we like to. I mean, again, I'm not trying to play the devil's advocate here, but uh, they are not making that much money because think about it, look at the content. You'll see where, how much money you can make. You're selling what? Tail because you're talking to a Desi housewife. You're selling soap because you're talking to a Desi housewife. Look at the ads. Are there yeah. ads about Netflix? Are there ads about Amazon? As opposed to the fact when you're watching YouTube, you will always see an Amazon ad. Download yeah. Hulu, download Hotstar, download Amazon, download this. Why? Because the YouTube audience is not only just diversified, it is somebody with that purchasing power who can pay, let's say, 400, 500, I don't know how much it is in Pakistan, but let's say this amount of money uh, per month for an online streaming service to entertain themselves. So the problem with the model that has been created in the Pakistani industry is like the films are just not there. They're very few and far between. Then you've got the TV channels that are focused on a very small part of the industry, which is creating content which is customized to this small intersection of society and then there's nothing else so you don't have anything for you and me we end up we will watch these dramas and you know what else are we going to watch but then i think that everybody and every um, aspect of the industry needs to work together in maybe lowering their rates and starting from scratch right i i often think this you know i, I i've been a journalist for a, a decent number of years now and you've been a journalist for longer than i have like you 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 know that that the only way an industry can thrive is if they work together and every part of that jigsaw is very important. You know, a star is like, I, I did an interview with Madhuri Dixit the other day, like I know, last I saw, week. Yeah. So, you know, if, if somebody of her stature and her level of fame can say to me in the middle of the interview, I am nothing without the team around me. That goes to show that being talented or being famous is not enough. You know, you Even being a good person, even if you're a great celebrity who says all the politically correct things, it will not matter. No, you need a, a team who's going to 
push that and manipulate that in the right way. Um, yeah. And that's why, you know, let's take Ranveer Singh, for example. Ranveer Singh started his career in 2010. He signed to Yashraj Films and they handle his, um, his films, they handle his PR, they handle um, his digital, they handle everything. And together, those different aspects have built the brand of yes. Ranveer Singh. You know, it's not just him alone. If actually, I can promise you, if Ranveer Singh wore the clothes that he wears um, and just turned up to an event and didn't have the backing that he has from the management company that he has, people would laugh at him. But they praise him because his management team have built a persona around him that is celebrated for his eccentricities, you know, rather yeah. than rather than looking at him as a clown. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned Yashraj because I know that Yashraj talent managers Parniti and Arjun and all of their main talent who they have signed on and they keep on for various films and everything. And what's fun to me is that Yashraj is a massive film production company. So what you said uh, earlier about uh, people coming together, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think because there's far too much competition and competition is good. I have no problems with that. But what I think that what, what the seed of the idea that you have, and I hope somebody important enough is watching this to create it. What I think that these content houses should do is create those PR firms in house. Let yeah. their experts, but they can afford it. These stars on their own cannot, but they can. Marvish, forget them even building PR for their clients. They don't even do PR for their dramas Correct. properly. Yeah. They do, imagine, but not at that level that they should, yeah. Not properly, not properly. Not like, properly. imagine if I, if I go to, I, I can give my own examples. If I go to Mumbai and, I con and, and before I go out there, I will contact um, your big PR agencies. I will contact your big talent management houses. And I'll say, what's the scope to collaborate here? You know, yeah. what are you working on right now that yeah. works in my, in my kind of um, schedule? And what can we do together? And yeah. They'll say this film is releasing in seven months time, but we can record something now. We can embargo it. We can get you on the sets for this film. We can do this. Yeah. When I came to Pakistan and I approached the Pakistani channels with the same idea, they were <laughs> clueless. They yeah. didn't know what I, I think, um, not last year, but the year before I came to Pakistan while they were shooting Angan, mm. um, which oh. was the big, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah, Fajal, yeah. Ahad, Mavra, Hira, yeah. um, Essen, Sonia, yeah. big, big project. And, you know, I went to Hum TV and I said, look guys, this would be a great thing for us to do. We can record an on the sets um, piece yeah. and we can release it when the drama's about Edit to end. Yeah. Yeah. But the idea doesn't quite exist in the same manner. I know they, they have done it for dramas like Suno Chanda. I know they invited some press there. But, you know, in Pakistan, drama stars are the biggest celebrities, right? I, I think so. Bigger yeah. than film stars in Pakistan, yeah. the drama stars yeah. 100%. are huge. 100%. Why are you not doing promo around the launch of a drama? Last night, Zibaish started on Hum TV. Nobody why were, Nobody why were Zara and Asad not doing a day full of press junkets with the media, you know, a couple of days before the drama release. No, but see, I think I saw some with PR Ke Sadke. I saw some yeah. with some other TV shows. Like, I think uh, the one with, I don't know, something Aiza did. Uh, she did that. And then I think they, had, they did something big with, but that was because Mere Paas Pramo had already become big. So it was like a meet and greet with the cast or something. And by yeah. that time, it was already very, very big. Uh, so yeah, you're absolutely spot on about that, that this is such a stupid little thing that they just need to manage it's i'm calling it stupid not because the idea is stupid but because it's just an organizational uh, you know sort of gap there's nothing yeah. else it's not like oh somebody with big great big brains has to create it's not like a coronavirus vaccine it's just something very simple that you know dozens of industries around us have done it and even in dubai when even when like something as small as a theater play releases I get like, I would be, we would get like press releases, interview inter interaction opportunities. And then those dates are set like seven days before, like even forget a theater, a shop opening and you'd get to interview the CEO. So, and, and you're absolutely right. They're so big. Zara and Asad as a couple are so big, like their, their wedding pictures trended. But none of their TV shows are trending. Like, why? No, no, and then the problem is, then they have to do their own PR. Like, I know Zara and Asa did an Instagram live last night, which is great. And that's the most they can do in their obviously, capacity. Obviously. Yeah. But, but, how, but the channel or the production house should be thinking about how we can maximize the yes. reach of yes. this drama. 
absolutely i completely agree with you i really hope momin other radio watching this or the great big ones at uh, at uh, geo and ary i hope i'll try to you know uh, you know help them see this as well as as many people as i know because i feel like this is just i mean we're not saying it out of uh, we're just saying it as a commentary i think we have faced the issue with trying to coordinate with these guys and trying like you said what you what what you faced in angan so for sure i think that this is an important point and i definitely now want to come it comes from a good place it comes from a good place because yes. we're saying this because we believe in the content yes. the content is good nobody is arguing that the, that pakistan isn't producing good content all three of the major channels uh, home tv ary and geo are all producing good content but how far is it traveling and how much further could it travel if yeah. you did the right strategy around it yeah absolutely and there's a there's a proverb in urdu that says jungle mein mor nacha kisne dekha i mean the a peacock dance but, on. but who saw i mean so if you, the peacock is beautiful and it's got these amazing plumes and feathers and everything but if you nobody's there to see it then you can dance all you want honey so that is one thing <laughs> definitely want to talk about um the one of the third points that i wanted to talk about was that when we when we consider our jobs as journalists and that's why i wanted to stated that and you very rightly also pointed out that this comes from a good place so i also want to talk about you did a wonderful series of beyond bollywood first of all congratulations on that Thank i mean you. it was Thank absolutely you. brilliant i've not seen everything but i've seen some of the snip, snippets and i've seen some of the episodes and it's just such a great insightful conversation which i don't expect from bollywood uh, because most of the time people are asking them okay so what do you eat in breakfast and you know what kind of training shorts do you wear and these kind of things so i think it's you and film companion which is doing like amazing stuff which i really love uh, so Thank i want to ask you uh, harun and i want to discuss this as well that you mentioned something with rajiv masan then that was something that really caught my attention that um we have we we only talk to these celebrities we are not really friends with them we are friendly so there's a big difference between the two uh, two ideas and also something that we were discussing earlier as well is that sometimes some of these stars when they speak to friends who are real life friends who are not just friendly but they are actual friends they give out more information they're friendlier they it it, it seems easier for them to talk to uh, these people but uh, and uh, those con- questions aren't like taken like excuse me why are you asking me this question how can you ask me this question why would yeah. you ask me what kind of shorts i wore when i was a child but uh, let's say samina pirzada can easily get away with it or maybe a hasan shahri ar yasin can get away with it but maybe you and i can't right so tell me about both these things what's what's your take on that firstly i love that you think the question again to mind is what color shorts did you yeah wear? i mean so i mean that samina pirzada has asked not exactly this question but she does ask those questions i'm like I, I love her show she's adorable and i've like been a fan of hers for so long but some of the questions are like yeah, I, uh, yeah? I, you know what first things first i am a fan of both these two people that you yeah, mentioned first we do and hsy yeah. um, are icons in their own right and have yeah. worked very hard to have the reach and the profile and the platforms yeah. that yeah. they have but okay. yes they totally can get away with asking <laughs> questions that you and i can't and yeah. it's interesting right i think there's two aspects to this um and it's interesting you mentioned the the podcast series so the podcast series that i did called bollywood uncovered was yeah. literally um delving into this kind of behind the scenes machinery that none of the fans really know about the kind of relationship between the stars and the media and the dynamics between um journalists themselves and all of all of those kind of things um in pakistan the first thing is are we friends with the celebrities no we're not friends with yeah. celebrities we are friendly though yeah. i would say that you know i i would i would um very happily say that we are on I, and i i speak for both of us here we're on very good terms with the majority yeah. of yeah. celebrities yeah. Majority. You know, and uh, um and i would go as far as saying i'm on friendly terms with most bollywood celebrities like friendly as in when we see each other it's warm and there's no uh, and you know they will come and greet me and i will go and greet them and it's it's warm um but i would say pakistan is actually um is even friendlier i would say pakistan pakistani celebrities are even friendlier on right. on that scale of uh, of friendly yeah. um and i think pakistani celebrities have a lot of goodwill with the journalists who they are friendly with and because of that we do refrain from asking certain questions 
we don't compromise on our journalism. And this was another aspect of my of my podcast. I, I would never say that I've compromised on my journalism because I'm friendly with a celebrity, but I will think twice about whether a certain area of their life needs to be discussed and whether it's actually going to add anything to my, whether it, whether it um, is necessary, you know? Like for example, I, I just watched HSY's interview with um, Mahira Khan last night, which was a lovely interview. And Mahira is amazing as always, you know, and, yeah. and she's a celebrity that you and I are on very friendly terms with. Yeah, we love her. Yeah, absolutely. But if I was doing an interview with Mahira, I wouldn't ask her about her love life. Yeah. And I, I just wouldn't, you know? Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything uh, particularly newsworthy about her love life and certainly not uh, and, and I know it's not something she would feel comfortable talking about but a HSY can get away with that you know and, 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 and uh, Samina asked her the same question Samina asked her the same question yeah absolutely they, they they can get away with it how I mean how do you feel about that I think that it's uh, every time I, I watch Samina's show and she asked and she always like uh, I, I don't know if you remember Anupam Kher show, Kuch Bhi Ho Sakta Hai? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when he would talk to even a Shah Rukh, they would go back to their DDLJ days and they would talk about these things. So when Samina was talking to, let's say, Atif Aslam, I caught one of the episodes and, in Atif, and when she was talking about Atif Aslam, she also sort of talked about her own experience and her own time when she heard Atif for the first time and she was already a veteran and Atif was newcomer. I feel like when you have somebody from that stature, they they get away with so much. I'm talking specifically about Samina, not HSY. But somebody yeah. like a Samina uh, sort of comes from a very different place. I think it's the simi it's the simi garewal effect. It's the simi garewal effect, yes. But as uh, from what I understood with simi garewal was, and, and I want I don't want to really compare the two like that because uh, they're different eras also. Uh, yeah. I remember so much stuff could be said back then, which obviously Bollywood stars will not be able to say anymore. Uh, but yeah. I feel like uh, she was trying to go for the same vibe. Samina was trying to go for the same Simi Garewal vibe. But my problem with uh, with that is that Simi Garewal was having conversations. Whereas I feel like Samina has her set of questions, which like, zindagi kya hai, maut kya hai, bachpan mein kya kiya tha, ammi pasand thi, abu pasand thi, these kind of questions. I think she has like a set of those, like, you know, and which is fine. That's a different format. And I, I have that too sometimes. I have that too with the celebrities I interview. I have a set, set of like seven questions or maybe I'll have the Proust questionnaire or something, which I love doing. So it's different. But at the same time, I feel like Samina comes from a very like seniority privilege. She has that. And uh, like you said, HSY has that own insider privilege. So he will be able to say and she will be able to. So both of them are saying different things because of their different privileges. And I absolutely agree that you and I will never be able to ask that question or if we do ask that question we will be risking our access sometimes like oh if i say this would that person you know be okay with it would they yeah i mean i i don't think we would uh, look if, if if we were if i was doing an interview with um any of these people tomorrow Mahira yeah. or, or or Saba or or any of these people any who have done yeah. recent interviews and i asked that question i don't think it would cause an issue in our um equation i don't think there would be i don't think um you know i don't think any of them would be like really i don't think anything would go wrong i yeah, just feel yeah. that as a journalist i probably wouldn't go there uh, because i don't think it's necessary you know if she wants to talk about her love life she will put it on a public platform and she hasn't put it on a public platform yeah, yeah, and so yeah. therefore it's my job as a journalist to respect that privacy that that yeah. that star has has asked for um but yeah. my issue with those kind of um celebrity interviewers is that as journalists we challenge answers right so if somebody, if a guest on a show, and I'm not talking about any of the recent interviews here, but if a guest on a show says something problematic, it's our job to challenge that. Yeah. But when they go and do an interview with their celebrity interviewer, they're not challenged on anything. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and I remember reading an article on Mango Vars um, probably a couple of years ago when Samina's show was, was really picking up around that time. And I remember reading, uh, it was, it was a, a critical piece about the show or I think actually it was in Dawn it wasn't in Mango Bars but it was a critical piece about the show and it was um, saying that she doesn't challenge any problematic opinions that celebrities have and my initial thought was of course she doesn't because she's not a journalist you know and I, I think it's really blurred lines yeah 
no but i feel like it's it's important to uh, know our jobs as journalists when we are doing interviews when we have a scoop so to speak or when we have uh, even like you said celebrities we are friendly with sometimes a lot of the celebrities uh, we've been talking about all the celebrities we were friendly with let's talk about people we weren't friends or friendly with uh, even those we would uh, you know sometimes these pr guys they vet the questions and sometimes they want to ask also oh, what are you going to ask so, uh, we have to stick to this we have to stick to that you know we don't want to answer about these questions or we don't want to answer about this these etc etc so sometimes you respect that and i'm like okay fine i won't uh, i i don't want to anyway i have a i have a personal rule i don't really talk about personal life until somebody really wants to like if somebody i think it depends i think it depends like for example i did ask ahed about his personal life you know oh, yeah, and i, I did yeah. and i did ask asim azhar about his personal life and yeah. i don't think i overstepped any boundaries there because their personal life was playing out in the public sphere yeah, yeah. so it became you know? a news point so to speak you know i think um when i spoke to ahed yakin ka safar had just finished airing or yeah. yeah it was a couple of months after yakin ka safar had finished airing yeah. and him and sajid were actively um posting photos together gazing into one another's eyes as a journalist i'm completely within my right to address yeah, that and they're sharing it publicly yeah yeah similarly when i when i interviewed asim azhar and i asked him about hania they had been posting stuff together it, yeah. it there was no way i could ignore that yeah. but when it's a celebrity who hasn't really put it in the public domain hmm. i'm being respectful by not going there Yeah and okay I, yeah so you make a fair point about if it's there if they are the yeah. ones putting it out there sure you can maybe question that but i just feel like i just don't do it anyways i like to keep it very specific to what they are doing in terms of their projects i do like to talk about their own psychological struggles and their own emotional journeys about a character or about a certain failure or a success and within that if they have a if they have a personal story to tell i'm happy to sort of speak about that but i don't know sometimes i feel you right you have and actually that has made me think that i really don't uh, i really don't think i've been very comfortable in discussing uh, uh, people on camera that is like if if i'll hear something from somebody oh you know that person is dating that person so you do get to hear things and then yeah. i'm like no um, yeah i'm about to interview them but i i will not ask them this question i will not so yeah, yeah. you make a fair point that if something is there and they they're discussing it and they want to talk about it then sure but if it's just something you've heard of the grape wine somebody told you something you really don't want to bring it up in a in a in a you know visual so interview. here's here's a question for you yeah as a journalist who who knows your craft who knows your job who knows what the process of interviewing should be like yeah do you think that having celebrity interviewers has made it an uneven or an unfair playing ground absolutely i think that this whole influencer culture is very toxic uh the celebrities interviewing them the influencers interviewing them uh brands interviewing them uh these kind of whole this the interview thing is becoming very very ridiculous uh, I, i i was watching some of these other interviews i think it was one of the digital ones can't name or even place who who i'm thinking about right now but some of the questions were like why are they asking these questions and what does that have to do and you know and i was amazed uh, and i think it was in bollywood it wasn't even in lollywood it was some somebody in bollywood who was asking these big stars on a very big digital platform yeah i know who it is i can't name them so <laughs> i i am immediately at that the whole banner flashed in, in my eyes oh, okay. <laughs> so i don't want to name them but i remember looking at these questions and i was like man you got a great star you got a great digital presence and i was looking at the views they were like 500000 600000 views and they're constantly yapping about absolutely nothing arun just yeah. nothing. like this is what i feel this is what aggravates me because as a person who who wants to know so curious about so many things that uh, that are that these stars have done in terms of their films and projects and i want to talk about so many other things and they're like talking about like and especially my biggest pet peeve one of my biggest pet peeves is what's in your purse <laughs> i hate it it's so stupid and i probably will end up doing it at some time in my life if i ever if i ever end up in that position but i hate it i hate it so much but what's in your purse that's like personal first of all and secondly <laughs> what how is this benefiting anybody like how like how why why is my life better after knowing what was in alia bhats purse tell me 
I, I think improvements need to be made on all levels, right? So like, you know, actually I go back to an earlier point I made when, when I criticized um, or, or I gave feedback to the channels that why aren't you um, setting up proper promotional windows for your dramas? Yeah. Maybe the problem is that there aren't enough outlets mm -hmm. yeah. for those interviews. That could also be a thing, you know, maybe the outlets just don't um, ask the right questions or uh, that that is quite possible as well. Hmm, that could be true and I, like you said that there there is a big gap in that communication that these channels need to do and also I feel like so many of these like I remember one of the just a few days ago somebody has announced oh the fans are going crazy why because Sonia Hussain has announced in a comment of a, about a new show that she's doing she's literally replying to a fan's comment that I this is the new show that that's coming up and that's exactly what you mean that uh, yeah. you know, why isn't there was it why wasn't there a news piece why wasn't there somebody covering this why didn't the channel release a press statement and if they, if they release a press statement why was there somebody not on these channel these newspapers heads to make sure that that press release or that interview or anything x got published and that's an absolutely valid point and again like like i think that we share that that because we both sort of have covered bollywood and lollywood both that is something that is done like clockwork in bollywood yeah. you'll know it six months before they'll start doing the junkets you'll know if they're going to come to dubai they want to know if there's going to be a press conference you're going to know even if you'll be invited maybe sometimes you won't be invited because some yeah. of the stars have not had a great relationship with one of the outlets i was working for so we were like oh maybe we won't be invited maybe we'll be invited oh we were invited oh fantastic let's set up something you know even though they are very predictable unpredictable sometimes but compared to pakistan at least it's better than not having anything at all also, I think it's quite it's quite simple, right? Like in Bollywood, if um, so, actually that's a good example. Like I think, yeah, Sonia Hussain wrote on Twitter that she was doing a drama and it became a news headline, right? Yeah, uh, no, sorry, she she replied to an Instagram comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, um, and even actually, let's look even closer to home. Uh, Sonia is in a drama that starts soon, which is um, supposedly inspired by Jedi. Completely. Like whole, whole well, well, look, we haven't watched it yet. And Mansha Pasha has just put out a statement saying it's not inspired by Jedi. Okay. So the point is, in Bollywood, what would happen is that the production house would set up a deal with Bombay Times. And so at midnight tomorrow, for example, that article would be on the front page of the Bombay Times. It will be on their website. And then all the other news outlets will quote from that exclusive article. Are you telling me that a Dawn or an Express or any of these papers don't have the appetite for that kind of you, deal? I think what happened with, I don't know if you remember the film, Saadin Mohabbatin. Yep. So Saadin Mohabbatin, everybody knows this, was a production of Dawn, Dawn Films. Right. And the film didn't do well, unfortunately, for Dawn. But Dawn really went all out to sort of create that buzz through their own papers. And this is what the I think the benefit of HUM, uh, not HUM really, but uh, ARY NGO was. Because both were news channels. So when they started movie in the movie business, when they started creating these big hits like Donkey King or Donkey Raja, I don't know what the right name is, uh, slipping my mind right now, but like Bin Roy and all. So they're uh, not Bin Roy, sorry. So ARY was creating uh, Jawani Phir Nahi Aani and those films. Punjabi so, Yeah, Punjabi Jaungi. So they were creating buzz on their platforms. So uh, as far as television was concerned, they were still, I think, covering it. But uh, traditional media or social media, I think they've been very, very far behind with that. And that too was like, they just created a buzz like, oh, it's about to release in 30 days. And I remember I had so many conversations here uh, with PR firms here before, obviously, COVID. And uh, they were very interested in Pakistani entertainment industry. And they're like, we never hear about the, the Pakistani entertainment industry because I was consulting about a few Pakistani projects. And they were like, oh, we never hear about it. And I'm like, the reason why you don't hear about it is because they're not making the noise. And yeah. the same goes for the new radio channels here. When it was, remember when the time in Lord Wedding and Farwaz Ajnoon and Jawani Pindiyani 2 had all come out. Was it Jawani yeah. Pindiyani 2? Yeah, right? Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. This trifecta of like <laughs> Lollywood films. So all of them were coming out. Great music, great cast, look so fun. And people are watching it. People are talking about it. So everyone was interested here. In Dubai, and I was like, "That's fantastic! There's a buzz. Let's capitalize on that." And I and I didn't really see anything happening from it. And I reached out to so many people. I'm like, "Look, there's this happening, and do you guys want to get interested in that? Try to get something may happen happen for your future projects now that there is interest." Nothing. So you mentioned those films. Uh, I just want to go on a tangent for a moment, if if that's okay. Yeah. Um, 
it really annoys me. It is a bugbear of mine. Is that the right? Is that what it's called? A bugbear? Yeah. It, it really annoys me that Pakistan is producing good films and they are nowhere to be seen. It, I tweeted this at the start of lockdown as well, but it's been two years since Bravaz Hajanoon released. Yeah. It is not on a single streaming service. It's not even available for free on YouTube. And, and what I don't understand is, I, I, you know, enough people have told me, look, they're owned by channels and the channels want to premiere them and that becomes a big moment for them. That's fine. I don't argue with you. That, that's cool. You, you produced it and you want to capitalize on that. But for example, this Eid just gone, Superstar and um, Baji both premiered on their respective channels. And Heer Manja, they all yeah. premiered on their respective channels. Yeah. Those channels should have had deals set up with Netflix or Amazon to premiere those films a week later. You know, I, people ask me quite often, Marvish, please recommend... Pakistani films we're interested in seeing um, where, where we're at and I can only recommend them like two or three on Netflix and Amazon and or that's some it are on YouTube I think uh, yeah but you know the problem with YouTube is they haven't got English subtitles or there's yeah, you know there's yeah, a yeah. problem yeah, yeah, um, yeah my big problem is English subtitles yeah right so you know why why aren't these channels thinking that if we put the film on um, a Netflix or an Amazon the reach will be so much bigger and you know, the, the reach the, because that's the Gulabo Satabo released exclusively on Amazon Prime. Yeah, exactly. And everybody watched it in the last 24 hours. And it's just, I mean, I, I don't know why I can't answer for those channels, but yeah, I completely get what you mean. I've been trying to say this about the, what you've been saying about the TV fil, uh, films. I've been trying to say about the TV shows, you know, yeah. those great TV shows back in the eighties and the sixties and seventies, which my mom tells me often about, you know, there was this TV show. I'm like, okay, what was the story? And she's like, oh, this was the I'm like, that sounds really interesting. So what, where can I watch this? She's like, oh, you have to search on YouTube. And I search on YouTube and there's nothing. So who's responsible? And I, I've written about this. Uh, uh, when I was working for Pakistan Television back in the, I, my first program on Pakistan Television was in 1996. I was a kid and I had done a TV show back then. And I remember <clears throat> one of my producers there was the, uh, she retired as one of the, big people in in uh, in the in on, in karachi center i remember one of one of the times when i went to her and i was like uh, can i please get my old tapes like my old shows like i did a tv drama as well in wow. 2000 yeah in the year 2000 yeah it was like this group of it was really silly it was a group of these young teenagers who who are who are solving crimes for some reason and they're all like these brainy weirdos who just sit on a desk and they just talk they don't do anything so this is one scene where we dig up a grave and we find a skull, weird scene. But uh, yeah, that and I remember I wanted that, uh, that, uh, uh, that. I want to watch this. Where can I watch I, it? I want to watch it too. It was called Adventure Times. And it, okay. was, it was written in this most pithy dialect. Nobody talks like that. But my character was supposedly one of the people who did not talk, talk like the brainiacs. And I was like the bit of like, let's do this sort of. Right. <laughs> so, so that TV show I really wanted and I asked her about it. I'm like, can I please get that? I really want it. Can I get it on a CD or a DVD? And she's like, you know what happened? Uh, there was a rain. I'm like, there was a rain? She's like, yeah, there was a rain in Islamabad and all of our tapes were there and the tapes were destroyed. Oh, no so way. 20 years worth of footage from PTV. So much of footage. I mean, they saved some because yeah. I, I did a show um, in the same year which she still had and she poor thing went and got it all converted on DVD and gave me that show. Right. But that show, which I wanted among other shows that I had done and a lot of other people had done, they were destroyed by rain. So wow. you can imagine the, the, I don't know that, I don't know what you call it, the curse of the red tape, or you want to call it incompetence or you want to call it just not caring about the kind of gold content we created, not talking about my show, but like, I think it's lack of value. It's lack of value. It's not, it, there's no value for, for, um, entertainment, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's like that whole the stigma is there. Like just recently, I saw uh, people were saying the word mirasi for, uh, for you know, for 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 artists, and I was like, that's such a terrible word. But people use it, and they use it very pejoratively. They don't like, and it's changing for sure. It's definitely changing for sure. So it's exciting to be a part of an industry that's going through an evolution. But it's still so sad to see it sometimes. And I think that what really needs to happen is that the government needs to sort of step in in a big way and sort of say that, listen, we really support the industry 
and whatever you guys need just let us know and we'll help you when it comes to um economic or financial sort of help i think that's one half of it i think that the majority of um viewers or consumers need to really address their own mindset yeah. because i'm sorry but the majority of people who follow these celebrities on social media are hypocrites oh, because God, yeah. they consume the material but yeah. they also give gandhi galis to these same yeah. people who yeah, yeah. are starring in them they think lesser of them they think that they're worthless because they work in the entertainment field yeah. and and it is really disgusting you know yeah. it's really some of the comments some of the you know i know um sarah kamar launched her youtube channel recently yeah. and in her first youtube video in her first youtube video or her second youtube video she shows um a sh- there's a, a sequence where she's reading some of those comments and she's laughing at them and you know she's thick skinned enough to laugh at them yeah. it's a really hurtful horrible remarks you know and you kind of think like why does somebody think that's okay to do in yes. what world is it okay yes. to to attack somebody based on their profession yeah 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 no no i constantly see the comments some of some of these stars who i do follow on instagram and some of the you know sometimes if i make a comment about them if they tagged on them and some of them flood my replies and i've set my twitter notifications to just the people i follow i don't look no. at the comments i don't read the comments but sometimes when i do and sometimes when it's for work or if i'm writing an article and i have to look at the comments and i'm like oh my god this is traumatizing that's why i'm saying that's why i'll go back to my earlier point where i said that why are you looking at these comments they are awful yeah. get somebody yeah. to filter it for you because if you read this if one person sits and just they open the instagram and a lot of people like lambasted sadaf uh, for disabling the comments on her nikah picture and i'm like who in their right mind would leave the comments open to get all kinds of gandi gandi galiyan and all kinds of terrible horrible things about you in the comments why would she look at that abuse you will not and i think she did the right thing by disabling yep. the comments and she's i think she's disabled the comments for many of her posts like so i mean if you and what people to- forget is that's her right and that's her choice yeah. you know it's her choice it's not your choice it's her choice whether she wants to let you comment not comment upload a picture take down a picture it's her choice and that brings me harun to the content that we are creating let's just okay yeah these are all great ideas and i hope somebody listens to these whatever long minutes that we've discussed and i hope somebody pays attention because like you said comes from the heart comes from a good place but let's look at the content that we are creating there are two things which i always say i think that there are critics of tv shows which are there just for the sake of it no i don't like it nah i don't want pakistan dramas pakistan dramas no i never watch them they're so bad there's this aurat aurat ki dushman hai whatever so you know there's like four five type of critics which are just there to bash it now yeah. I'm all for bashing i'm happy to bash something because that's you know like uh, it's kind of like a job as well to tear something down completely deconstruct it see whether it's good or not so i understand that but when i what i get really upset about is and i get infuriated by is is that these same critics will watch something equally misogynistic and say wah kya scene hai you know if it's from are, another country sorry if it's from another country if it's from another country or even within the country if it's something which is like sl- slightly more like avant garde and it has their own if it's not it has the different vibe and they'll just buy the vibe and they just say whatever right so that's my big problem so i want to talk about the content and i want to i want to see if we can be fair how do we be fair because we do have a lot of problematic things in pakistani tv shows which definitely need to be called out and then there are all like for example the biggest case study or the biggest problem uh, example for which i think we can definitely sort of uh, look at this moral problem is the thappar so when a girl yeah. gets a thappar which we know that these production houses are doing because they get the trps from it yeah but the thappar is not something which you shouldn't show because a thappar does happen people do get beaten women do get slapped and a slap sometimes is something very common in certain households also not all but it does happen so what's your take like what do you think a good critique of a pakistani tv show should be keeping in mind that we do tend to bash them a bit unnecessarily and unfairly I think every drama needs to be judged from the gaze or the perspective that it's made from. Mm-hmm. So as you mentioned, um dramas are and art is a reflection of reality in most in the most lib- in the most um uh loose sense, right? Everything is a little bit exaggerated. 
everything is a little bit exaggerated. People take creative and artistic licenses and liberties, but art and drama in the widest sense is a reflection of society. So is discrimination against women and is um, domestic abuse occurring in society? The most basic answer is yes, it yeah. is. When you put it in a drama, are you glorifying that domestic abuse? Are you glorifying that violence? Or are you showing it from a perspective or a gaze that is going to make a, a man think twice before assaulting his wife? Yeah. You as a filmmaker, you as a director, you as a producer, a writer, an actor, right down to the editor, have a role to play and a responsibility in the impact your work is going to have on an yeah. audience. And I wish this wasn't the case, but the, tru the, the truth is in South Asia, in India and in Pakistan, cinema and television is one of the most powerful m means of education as well. Now, yeah. in, in the West and in the UK, that's not the case, right? Over here, um, education somebody, is educating. Education is education and you learn it in school. But in South Asia, that's not the case. And these TV dramas and films are hugely um, uh, influential. You, you know and so I think the problem here is if it was just one or two dramas showing a scene of domestic abuse and, I, and the reason I keep using the word domestic abuse is because a tupper is a form of domestic abuse it's not just a it's not a light it's not a light slap you know it is a form of domestic abuse and it yeah. is wrong in any given circumstance so let's call it what it is it's domestic abuse yeah if these dramas were showing a scene of domestic abuse in yeah. a negative light yeah. and we're trying to sympathize with the um, victim or of the assault, okay. then I would understand why you're putting it in there. But I'm sorry to say that there are a lot of dramas that glorify that assault as well. You know, and I don't want to mention the drama, but there was a drama that was hugely popular and, you know, is still hugely popular. It released a few months ago and you can work it out. That wasn't even a, sense, a, a scene of domestic abuse. It was a scene of a... a, a a woman hitting another woman but the action of a slap is now so seen to be taken so lightly and so flippantly that firstly it's insulting to women who are victims of domestic abuse because it makes it look like their suffering is not um is not worthy worthy right it's not as significant as you know being physically battered um but but also just i just think it's really irresponsible and unnecessary yeah. um and I don't think it, it's needed. And I would love less shows to, to show it. I mean, even like, let's take Bjarke Sadke, for example. You and I are both watching Bjarke yes. Sadke, right? Yes, yes. I have very conflicting views about the show, unfortunately, yeah. because I, I began, I loved the first 12, 13 episodes. I loved it. I tweeted about it. I binge watched it. Yeah. I thought the characters were amazing. I thought it was written amazingly. But then randomly, I think two or three episodes ago, Shanze's husband slaps her, right? Are yeah. you telling me that a slap is the only reason for you to end a marriage? It's not. They didn't no, need to be a slap. There were signs already for Shanze, so why didn't she pick up on that? It, it took a slap. It took a slap. And it's like, why? Why did it take a slap? And I think even in Yeh Dilmira, yeah. um, there is a slap in Yeh Dilmira as well, right? I think Mira Seti's character gets slapped by Adnan yes. Siddiqui. That's a bit different. That's a bit different. So in that circumstance... Yeah, and Adnan Siddiqui's character is pure evil. Yeah, so yeah. Exactly. But that's the perspective, right? When you watch that, you're like, this man is disgusting and despicable and that scene makes you sympathize with the victim no, but i don't agree in pr that isa guy is evil too we, we've established he's he's an awful person really you think so because in my opinion shanze's character is built up to be the liberal outspoken girl who had it coming yeah in my opinion that's uh, that yeah if you look at it from that point of view okay no but i, I, I see it i see it as shanze what I got from your point was, and this is what I thought was, that Shanze is somebody who should have seen, it should not have taken her a thappar to understand. Like, this is very, I don't want to say this, but this is very middle classy. And she's not a middle class girl who is like, oh, now I've been slapped, so now I have to leave this house. Now I'll never see you again. She was constantly badgered by this man. Do you remember those, those, those scenes between her and Isa? where he's like telling her, you are, you are nothing, you don't know anything, you're a weirdo and you don't know what perfume to wear and you don't know how to sit and how to talk. And like this kind of an empowered girl who doesn't even like people calling her to, you know, message her, friendship her, whatever. 
she actually put up with that whole oh i don't want to wear red on my uh, wedding day and i don't want to do that i think that would have been a game changer for her already and i think the problem was they because they wanted to insert the whole dusri biwi dusri shaadi angle they let this drama carry on between shanze and isa they no no she marries him it's all fine she tries to make do but then finally you know after thappar to obviously she will not stay it was that mindset which i have a big problem with no she's a liberal girl and that's just logical inconsistency i wouldn't call it demonizing or using the thappar i would call it a logical inconsistency but what you are rightly pointing out towards that tv show which was aired a few months earlier and very popular and everything and you rightly pointed out about how sometimes some of these thappar show that the man has the power and can do it and maybe by some point it was somehow justified and though the trend is changing now they are not really showing now they say that no tumne thappar mara now to i will leave but sometimes not in chandra's case i feel but in sometimes some girls are actually shown that they do deserve it and that's not right okay that's so right. let's let's take um jewish dilruba no i i saw a couple of episodes yeah but did okay, you so have there Yeah, so I I think Dilruba is a good show. I I I like the show. I think Hania yeah. is very good in the show. I yeah. think the ensemble yeah. cast is also very good. All the guys are are doing a good job as well. Um, but essentially, this is a girl who is a serial flirt, and before okay. she gets married, um, out of unusual circumstances, she yeah. has flirted with multiple guys. And yeah, yeah, from the time the yeah. drama starts, she is shown in a negative light. You you know that this drama is setting her up. to get um to get her come up and that eventually yeah. <laughs> she's going to get what is coming to her and um there's a series of events that lead to um her husband finding out that she has had all these flings with guys before she got married there's two things here is a woman not allowed to have the same romantic desires that a man is allowed to have before he gets married well we we both know that that's incorrect she can ha- she can have as many flings as she wants it's not it's not your not your problem right yeah. and it was all before she got married and then the second thing is that he 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 re- her husband receives a photo album where he sees physical evidence of her having what was she doing she's standing in close proximity with another man and he slaps her and it was a completely unnecessary slap but i know that the audience think that it was correct in that circumstance yeah, yeah, because yeah. that is a problem coming yeah 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 very well pointed out that is the real uh, that is where i think i would have an issue because i feel like not just that and also i want to add a little bit of context to what you just picked up on and i think that's really important here is that a lot of these things are symbolic because pakistani tv shows cannot air or like so if it's like a picture so it in the audiences especially somebody like my mom who's watching these tv shows in her head oh tasveer dekh li it could mean something more explicit yeah. but not saying it but what <laughs> i completely agree with you is that see you are setting this character up for that slap she yeah. deserved it so whether or not you feel like domestic abuse is right or wrong but ye thappar to banta tha na ye to dekho isne kiya tha na matlab ye that is wrong that is absolutely right my my biggest slap problem is actually with punjab ne jaungi oh um, Dude, that was like bad. That was bad. Yeah. Was- so Punjab Nijangi to me is a good film, right? Yeah, let's let's just. Unfortunately, we have had to condition our minds to forgive these moments because they have now become too common, right? So we can't say this is a bad film because it had a slap in it. Because when you're looking at the um, you're looking at the full spectrum, you're choosing from not a lot of films anyway. Yes. So, Punjab Nijangi is a good film. Good performances. Um, Mavish's character is shown as this liberal, modern, independent woman, yeah. and so for the first half of this film, you are setting up the fact that she is going to be put in her place. And when that slap happens, the audience cheer yeah. for the man, you know. And the man is the, the 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 guy is the one who's cheated on or is about to cheat on his partner. Um, you, do you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's bizarre. and i think if you i don't know if you remember the film well do you remember that scene where he says that main tumhare naam apni bhaise kar dunga aur main murabbe kar dunga yeah 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 chalna. and then she goes to asfar and asfar's character i think his name is asfar also uh, or something and then she goes to him and she says that okay so what can you give me 
so you're like well this is a very independent uh, capable intelligent girl why is she being shown as a materialistic moron who would uh, just shift goal posts just because somebody is offering her a flat in london or something and then this guy who says that no i love you but i can't give you my flat actually made more sense to me <laughs> i'm like oh, yeah i wouldn't do that either i like hello lady calm down but uh, but then this girl is obviously not right and she's the main female protagonist so um that's well that's a long standing problem with khalilur rahman kamal's uh, i don't know if you caught caught this play called to dil ka kya hua i haven't seen it okay so there's this this is the khalilur rahman play which i think came straight at the heels of punjab in jangi right or somewhere near that but he was like he was really big at that time and i was like oh my god this is such a like apparently this is such a great writer though i wasn't really always a fan never a fan really but okay yeah, some turn of the phrase he would i enjoyed it every now and then so and i enjoyed punjab nahi jaungi i won't lie and pretend to have some sort of moral high ground i did enjoy the film but yeah these were the problems these were the issues i had problems with as well so in to dil ka kya hua it starts off with sami khan's character lamenting after aiza khan's character who has fallen in love with zahid khan's character don't remember their names but sami right. khan is now pining after aiza who has dumped him for no rhyme or reason so she's basically what uh she was in mere paas tum ho except with better and more modern clothes and one you can't fault khalilur rahman farooq uh, khalilur rahman kamar for sort of not showing uh modern versus uh you know desi it's most both of them are evil and it's it's always man versus woman the man is always the bichara who always ends up being exploited and that's why he's so famous his his work is so famous because he is always shown as like oh my god bichara mard kya ho gaya hai warna hum log to all our tv shows are like hi bichara so he is the one saying hi bichara so when you got that hi bichara he is immediately captured like the audience men. you know men this yeah. big chunk of audiences that the tv shows are missing so pyare afzal mere paas tum ho so many of these tv shows that he's written no, satke tumhare breaks that satke rule tumhare, right? satke tumhare satke tumhare mahira doesn't have proper dialogue she is just somebody who is sitting and who's just looking at her and she is beautiful i think she hasn't looked at her yeah I but she has she has no agency she is, she is exceptionally good in that drama i Dude, i still I think love her in that show but that show is so bad okay i need to maybe rewatch it because i have good memories of watching satke tumhare <laughs> please rewatch it yeah. <laughs> and now look at it look at it from shanno's perspective watch that okay. show from shanno's perspective i'm like this girl has no agency kya like she the bichara guy is like falling over trees and walls for this girl and she is like just looking at him prettily which is like to great to mahira's benefit she's like she's awesome like i would die for her too if i were the boy but seriously like nothing no not even a word and uh, the same thing happened with so many of uh, his tv shows but on the on the flip side mahira did shehre zaat mahira did uh, so many other tv shows which did not really show her in that you know bichari ladki light which is a label she often gets because of khirad but even if you look at so now this brings me to farhat ishtiaq's heroines or roles that are written by women farhat ishtiaq umaira ahmed sarwat nazir bi gul rida bilal all of these women have written roles which have which will have some level of empathy or some level of the you know, agency yeah they will also show the man as a good man also and they'll show the bad man also but they will have some sort of connect to the reality of the woman like i don't know amna mufti never really got that much of fame but please watch preet na kariyo koi if you have time this is with hiramani in it right Hiraz. Mani and Ehsan Khan, and it's such a lovely play. Never got the love that it deserved, but it was written by Amna. Amna wrote Gugi. Amna wrote okay. Akri Station, and I feel like these are the voices that need to be there more. But just because their drama doesn't give them the TRPs, they tend to get like, oh yeah, you know, if we if we have something, we'll write. And she's very brainy, and she's a lovely conversationalist. And I hope to have a conversation with her soon, like you with her. But she's just amazing. so and zanjabi lasam shah now with the problem with pyar ke sadke is that why why did you do that to a such a good show you could have made it about uh, abdullah and majnun so yeah should we should we talk about the issues with pyar ke sadke for a moment i know this is going on for ages so i'm sorry uh, if we uh, whoever's watching <laughs> wow we're still here maybe <laughs> okay. we split it why don't we split it okay so in the next part you guys can watch us talk about the latest dramas yeah okay should we do that Yeah, let's do that. So, guys, whoever's been with us so long, 
<laughs> but uh, check out our rest of the our part two about the latest TV shows in Pakistan that we're watching.